Okay. Good morning, afternoon, and evening to everyone, <laughs> whatever it is to you. Um, it's good to be back this morning, good to be back at all, and uh, I'm going to bring this up and make sure I've got it where I can kind of follow what's going on while everybody's coming on. It's been a few weeks, um, but I am feeling better, so trusting that everything will uh, will go well if I seem to go shorter today don't worry anything about it i i just don't want to overstrain myself and that's easy to do when you're talking because you're using your your whole stomach area um i was thinking about um years ago we had a we had pal talk going on i don't know how many of you remember it I, i've seen a few on a brother ifram was on there I think his name was Seraphim, mm -hmm. Alan Stuckless, Alan 47, mm -hmm. um, and there were there's many others of you, but I remember those, and um, I was just thinking about the whole pal talk and how we used to do that, and and it was a it was an enjoyable um, enjoyable thing, and we'd done it I think from around the year 2004 to 2010. 12. 12? So it was okay. all the way into 12. You were still wrapping it up doing the Rapture series okay. and all that. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. And then we got into the Brother Illyrio took over the live broadcast or took over the website. I had my own website which was really um, limited. I don't know what you call it. Junky. <laughs> Whatever you might call it. It, 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 it. it served its purpose but that's about all it did. Mm -hmm. And Brother Alirio, um, I traveled with him in 2010 in India, and he asked me. He said, "Brother Parnell, you you uh, you have anybody that takes care of your website?" And I said, "Well, yeah." I said, "Me," and he said, "I can tell." <laughs> <laughs> so. He said, if you wouldn't mind, I would love to build a website and take care of it for you. So he's been doing that since 2010, and here we are in 2021. He's been 11 years on that website, and I think around, must have been around 13, 12 or 13, we started a live mm -hmm. broadcast. Mm -hmm. So he's been handling all those things for years for us, and thank you, Brother Lirio. I appreciate it. Um, Brother Mitta has been a, a strong part of that um, and just pray for Brother Mitta and all the different ones that love this and um, are bringing it to their people. There's so many, Pastor Joe, Pastor Isidro, Pastor, all, all the different ones, I could just keep naming them out there, they're everywhere. Um, and the African brethren, Brother Vincent Dorku, just a wonderful brother. So I was thinking about all those because all of you were writing me and saying, Brother Parnell, get better, get better. We're trusting, we're believing. And, and your love and your energy in Christ has made me better. Um, I am healing. And... You know, I, 
I expected the March 9 to be the last operation that I would have for years. And for some reason, the suture split, hematoma formed. We had to go back in on Good Friday and do it again. Um, but it has uh, healed excellent. I've been very careful. Um, I haven't lifted, I haven't pushed, I haven't pulled, I haven't done anything that would affect the healing process. And uh, this is the first thing I've really done that will kind of work the, that whole area. So re let's remember the Philippine people. I don't know if any of them's on, but um, from in the Beagle area, they're the center point of a typhoon that is going through right now. And let's be in prayer for them that all goes well, the damage is minimal, and um, maybe the thing will turn, go back out to sea and leave them alone. So let's pray for them, trust for them, and believe for them. So this morning, I, uh, I had posted, I wanted to talk on uh, spiritual and natural selection. And um, if I stop for a moment, it's just to kind of rest things. If I go a little slower, um, I've asked Daniel, I said, you know, if you notice that I'm slowing down or so and you got something to say, feel free to speak up and go ahead and, and talk for a minute. Um, Sister Connie, um, of course, she lost her mother since we went off and I was having my operations she lost her mother she made a trip to Texas for a couple weeks and um, so she has made it back on April 7th mm -hmm. and um, so be in prayer for her I know how it feels I've lost my mother and father and um, it's never easy and things are never the same you can you can get through it and you can you can move on, but you're moving on with a different feeling mm -hmm. um, when someone like that so close to you is gone. So be in prayer for Sister Connie. Do you have anything you wanted to say? or? Well, it was nice to be there with my mom. Um, she went in peace. And I know she's happy. I miss her and I miss my dad too, but I'm happy because they are together again. Yes. So keep keep me in your prayers. And I love you all. This is one of the things in life that you never I don't care who tells you what gives you what advice, you never get over it. It's something you just get through. There's no getting over that because we're not meant to get over it. We're meant to come here and be slammed right in the face with death and experience how that feels. We're not to get over it. We're meant to go through it, absorb that process, and gain understanding from it. And it's hard, but this is a very important stage in our life is experiencing these things. That's it. Yeah. That is it. We came here for... We set the earth up. We set up natural mm -hmm. nature and natural selection to feel the things that we couldn't feel when we were in theophany. And the, the largest thing is loss. It's death. It's sickness. We came here to feel that loss and then to feel the healing process. Mm -hmm. It's something we couldn't do. We couldn't be healed. We couldn't lose. We couldn't die. We couldn't. None of those things were a part of our process but it was a part of our attributes. Mm -hmm. So we, we came here to feel those attributes, to experience those attributes. And um, we'll get started here in just a moment. Let's do remember Sister Elizabeth Parson. She had a hip replacement and she is healing. And um, during this whole time that, um, that we've been down, she is she's also going through some pain and and let's remember her that uh, that the healing will go well for her <clears throat> now 
Now, I wanted to I wanted to take a little bit of time and just talk about spiritual and natural selection. I titled this spiritual and natural selection because I wanted to talk about how they they both work in unison. Um, the way you see physical uh, natural selection taking place, and we'll talk about that, and the way you see spiritual uh, selection taking place, um, they're in unison one with the other. The, the physical is a, a, a shadow, you could say, or it is a, it is a, a wholeness experience that we couldn't experience under spiritual selection. We couldn't experience it all. So we needed that other half the physical to experience it. Brother Branham even talked about resurrection and he talked about a lot of people say well we've had a spiritual resurrection and now we're waiting on the physical resurrection that's just if you get into what the prophet taught and you get into what a lot of people are seeing in this day and you even get into the scripture and read it with a little bit of common sense and revelation you'll find out that natural and spiritual resurrection are the same thing. Uh, Brother Branham even talked about it with Elisha and Eli Elijah, and he talked about one was the spiritual and one was the natural, and they 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 um, they imitated one another, or and 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 uh, in every way, and he talked a lot about that. I forget, I think the way of a true prophet is what it was in he talked about physical and spiritual resurrection being the same thing when you were spiritually resurrected what do you think happened to your body you had a body change and you know you can't even be raptured without a body change brother Branham said we can't go there to meet him in these bodies what was he talking about you think he meant uh, we're going to change and fly away in the sky. No, when you have a spiritual resurrection, you have a body change. And when you have natural and spiritual selection, it's both your spirit and body that's going through it together in unison one with the other. And, you know, another place the prophet was talking and he said... Um, that that we can't go there with these bodies and he said um, there's the resurrection and then a body change and then a rapture people say well I'm I've been raptured but I'm waiting on the body change <laughs> you, you just haven't paid attention to what's been taught you by many people not just the prophet many people have taught better than that you you don't have a resurrection and get raptured and then you're waiting on a body change so you can fly away somewhere we have been resurrected through our day and our understanding and our awakening and we had a body change brother Branham said it in a rising of the sun he said he said uh, what do you think he said what what are you waiting on he said you, you, you changed. You, you started looking after spiritual things. You started walking after spiritual things. You don't even worry about communion anymore. You don't worry about foot washing. He said, I kind of fear somebody that still has all that in their mind. He said, you've had your body change. You, you, you change your thinking. You change your processes. You change the way you live. You change the way you walk. You change the way you act. It's a body change. So what I'm saying is the spiritual and the natural go together. And it's not a, it's not a linear thing. Like I, I got this and then I got this and now I got this and I'm waiting on this. It's a cycle and they're all happening in you. Everything. We've talked about it from the resurrection to the body change to the rapture to the wedding supper to the millennium, to the judgment, to all, all these things are cycles that are happening inside you all the time. So I titled this Spiritual and Natural Selection because I wanted to talk about how they both work in unison. 
Natural selection is the way in which two people can regenerate or reproduce themselves. And these two people would be a male and a female. So natural selection, now you can go a lot of unnatural ways. And it doesn't mean you're a bad person. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not the kind of guy that says, well, they're not living under natural selection, therefore they are lost or they are, uh, they are going to go to hell or they're, they're, they're not following the way it's supposed to be. I don't, I don't even worry about it. But there is a natural selection. If you want to regenerate and reproduce an image of yourself, then male and female need to get together. You say, well, they can do that in a test tube now. Yeah, with an egg and with a sperm, a male and a female getting together. So um, when we understand this and realize that it's natural selection is the male-female coming together. Now, I wanted to talk about that. It's in which two people can regenerate and reproduce is natural selection, a male and a female unit to create in their image. Spiritual intercourse with the spirit, you're, you're having intercourse with, and, and a male and a male can do this, and a female and a female can do this. And a male and a female can do what I'm about to talk about, because in spiritual, We'll talk about it. Just the spiritual intercourse with the Spirit is an affair between two. Peter and Cornelius. Two males having spiritual intercourse. When I say males, male in the body. In the, in the physical, it's two males having spiritual intercourse. And Peter brought that seed germ in Cornelius to life. He awakened it. It was already alive. Honestly, it wasn't even dormant. A lot of people say, well, that seed lays in you and it lays there dormant until somebody wakes you up. The biggest delusion that we need to get over is believing that we haven't been enlightened until we get enlightened. <laughs> We're getting enlightened every day, every moment of our life, from the time you're a baby till right now, all the way out until you drop this flesh and, and move in other realms. You're being enlightened every single day by knowledge and intellect and revelation and, and one another and just on and on and on. But Peter woke Cornelius up to his day and to his message. Cornelius was already giving alms. Cornelius was already serving the Lord. Cornelius was already a just man. That's what the, that's what the, the angel told Peter. He said, there's a man down here that's a just man, and he's doing all these things, and go to him. Well, Peter didn't quote wake him up in a manner of he was just in a stupor and didn't, didn't know what was going on in life, but he woke him up to his message in his day. He, he enlightened the seed germ so that inside Cornelius would take another step forward. And that's what we need to realize about one another. We're not saving one another. We're not enlightening one another. If you have been enlightened, you have been enlightened inside yourself. But what happens is, through intercourse, Peter and Cornelius, Philip and the eunuch, and I could just go on with more and more and more, it's a matter of enlightenment or an awakening to what is present in the presence and present for you to take a hold of in that day. There was, there was uh, Elisha, and he was a prophet, and he 
living in a tent. And go back and read the little story about all of it. There was a little maiden who was taken a prisoner by the Syrians. And she became a maid in the house of the, I forget his name, the one that was dipped in the Jordan, Captain. Uh. I can't think of his name right now. But she became a maid in his house. And here's a prophet all the way across the Jordan living in Israel. And here's Captain Naaman. And he's over here and he's a captain to the king of Syria. And this little maid who's been taken captive, Naaman has leprosy and is eating him up. And the little maid just speaks up and said, you know, if you were in Israel, we got a prophet over there. What was she doing? Captain Naaman was already living. He was already enlightened to what was going on in Syria. He had already moved to being a, a captain. He was all of those things. But this little girl was captured by the Syrians, given to Captain Naaman as a maid, and then she speaks up. The seed germ, she, her seed touches his and enlightens him to something and wakes him up and he takes a host and he heads for Israel because he wants to be healed. And he becomes enlightened. He realizes what's going on in his life. And he's healed. And that one little encounter with a maid on the back porch somewhere heals Naaman and brings, brings him to fame throughout Syria and wakes people up to a prophet that's living in the land. So spiritual intercourse, once it happens, then it is a physical thing that starts taking place. You physically, when you catch spiritual intercourse from somebody else or from within and you catch it and recognize it, it makes a physical change in your life. They're not, they're not two different things. They're the same thing. So Cornelius and Philip, or Peter and Cornelius, Philip and the eunuch, and it's the pattern throughout the ages from then on. It's a, it's a showing of how it happens with us. Now we understand that the mind carries the seed. Now, the mind, to me, this is my understanding, when I look at the human being, and I think about everything, the mind is the male. It is the spirit. Now, I know in spoken word is original seed, Brother Radham called it the womb. But I think the heart or the soul of a person is the womb. Because when I start thinking with my mind and I begin to put out those seeds from my mind into my heart, it changes my soul. The soul is the womb, and the womb then begins to produce and bring forth a child or bring forth evidence of a seed that connected with an egg and dropped into the womb of your soul, and you begin to open up and you begin to talk about and live and become the character or become the soul of those thoughts. So now we understand the mind carries the seed, the germ, and the soul, or the heart, is the womb. As we think, we produce within ourselves. And the woman nature in us, the soul, is the woman nature. Remember Israel was the soul of the spirit, and then Israel Israel was the woman of the spirit and then Israel was dispersed throughout the earth. The woman nature went throughout the earth. So we see that, that the seed germ and the soul are the male and the female. And as we think, we produce within ourselves. And the woman nature opens brings the seed thought into the womb and begins to 
show through the soul a, a living soul or a change or a body change or a resurrection or whatever you want to call it, the soul changes. And it changes from the thinking, either the thinking from someone else which you bring it into your mind and you say, ooh, that's good. And you let it drop into your soul, your very heart and being, and you change to walk and understand and be a part of that that you heard either from Peter or Philip, like Cornelius and the eunuch did, or whoever it might be, and you begin to walk in that manner. So the woman nature opens or closes the soul. She is the soul. And she either opens to the thought and brings the seed from the mind in and closes the matrix and brings forth a child. Or either she doesn't and she remains barren of that seed. She says, no. Just like if somebody came along right now I said, oh, Brother Parnell, let me tell you, we've, I've got something on my mind that is so much greater than where you're at. And if you'll just stop a moment and listen, I can help you. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop a moment, and I'm going to listen. Because I have a woman nature in me that wants to take in a good seed and produce it. And then he starts talking to me about Trinitarian doctrine. Well, you know what my soul's going to do? This woman's going to say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that, that womb, she, she's just going to stay closed. She's not going to open up to it. Mm -hmm. She's not going to take that seed in. She'll remain barren to that seed. She won't produce it. And then, but then the same thing happens. He says, please, Brother Parnell, listen. Just like the other day, it happened. We were having a conversation. I've got it written down in here. I was kind of just trying to figure out how to discuss what a soul is or what a person is that has, that has united the attributes of male and female and become one exactly what would you call that person and so I was just writing it out uh, for the last month or so I was calling it uh, writing out F-E capital M-A-L-E just to hopefully show a little bit of difference and uh, so um, one of the brothers we were having a discussion about it and I said if someone could come up with something different I'd sure be glad to listen because I don't I'm not real settled on this mm -hmm. And a brother says, oh, Brother Parnell, I think, you know, I, I mean, when, I, when I'm ready to listen, I'm ready to listen. He said, I think what we ought to do is just add the H in there. And it'd be F-E-H-M-A-L-E, -E, female. And he said, that would show the difference between a male and a female this would be a totally different writing, F-E-H, M-A-L-E. And I, I thought, well, that's, that's, I'll think about that. And I wrote him back and I said, thank you, I'll think on that. Well, the more I thought on it, that's what the Spirit did in the Scripture. Mm -hmm. There was Abram and Sarah. And they were spelled A-B-R-A-M and S-A-R-A. -A. And so when, when Abram, Abram and Sarah came to their, their body change, their newness, their understanding, their awakening. The Spirit changed their names, and it was A-B-R-A-H-A-M and S-A-R-A-H. So he added a H to their names and changed the process and then brought on their, their body change, their spoken word as original seed, their... It brought on the promised son. It brought on all sorts of things. And I thought, yeah, that's, that's good. And so I said, from now on for me, when we're talking about a person that's a person that's holistic and understanding and 
no matter whether they're male or female, they understand that they are a female. They have it all within them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that. Mm -hmm. I liked it. So mm -hmm. when somebody speaks up and gives something worthwhile, open your womb, mm -hmm. open your soul, and let it change. Let it change your soul. So now we understand that the, the mind carries the seed, the germ, the, and the soul is the womb. And as we think we produce within ourselves, and the woman nature either opens up and changes the soul and brings forth a man-child and begins to walk a different physical life, a different spiritual understanding, and they align up and they come together and it's a resurrection and a body change or she says no not going to open up to that and she remains barren to that seed and she goes on and she does that throughout her processes in her life and every one of us I'm talking about is a her here today we have a her in us when we have discussions among us the same thing is happening. We're listening. We open up and say, I like that. I'm going to take that in. And it changes our talk in the future. It changes our walk. It changes our physical direction. It changes our spiritual thinking. It does all those things for us, and it is a spiritual and natural selection. You chose you selected that, you chose it, you took it in, and it changed your heart, your soul, your body, your being, and your spiritual thinking. So we have these discussions among us. The same thing is happening. We are issuing seed from the mind, and here is here's the organ, the mouth, this is the organ that issues the seed. You think about it. You process it. I hope you don't talk about things that are not a part of you. You know, I think a lot of people do do that. They do. They, do. <laughs> they just spew out at the mouth and want to throw their seed everywhere. What they're talking about really ain't even a part of them. So it doesn't produce. It, it, uh, it just falls to the ground. And so, but you think about things, and when you think about it, then you move it through the organ called the mouth. Paul talked about the mouth, how the Spirit is nigh you even in your mouth. The seed of the Spirit spiritually comes forth from your mouth, and physically it comes forth from your groin, from your organ. So we have these, and this is the spiritual organ that brings forth spiritual food to the people. We are issuing seed from the mind through the mouth. And the woman nature in the other individuals decides whether to accept or reject that seed. So, think about what you're saying. Think about what you're bringing forth. Think, form the seed, let it issue through the mouth, and let it be a seed that is, that is something that people want to produce. Someone said, you know, I, I, have, I have ministered the gospel for years and nobody wants to listen. Well, hmm. I would start asking exactly what kind of seed I was shoving out of my mouth mm -hmm. if nobody wanted it. <laughs> you know, I opened up a door is what I've done. I just opened up a door into love divine, into humanity, into after the opening of the seals, I opened up a door that helped us understand a query. I just opened the door. Some people say, well, Brother Parnell missed this. He's a Gentile, so he missed this. Or, or uh, he, don't pay no attention to him. 
Uh, he missed the whole coming of Moses and Elijah. He missed this and that. And you got people that are saying all sorts of things. Well, I didn't miss anything. And I didn't lead you to anything. All I've done is open the door. I heard things in my, in my mind. I tried them in my soul by changing. And it worked for me. And when it worked for me, I said, well, hey. If this will work for me, and it brings me so much joy and peace, it brings me so much understanding, it brings me to a connection with the earth and with the universe and with everything in it. If it's doing all this for me, and it has relaxed me and comforted me and made me love so much more than I've ever loved before, this would be good for other people. Mm -hmm. So I opened my mouth and began to put forth seed, thought, spiritual thought. And like one brother said, he said, Brother Parnell, you're right. You didn't miss anything. You didn't, you didn't lead us into anything. But when you opened that door, he said, I went through it and found the most wonderful place for myself. That's what this is about. Don't run around in the new land saying, Dom Parnell this, a Tory that. Say, it's me. It's me. This is me. This is working for me. This opens my mind up. This relaxes me. This gets me to where I'm not worried about what the world is doing. I'm not worried about all these things that are happening. I'm not worried about the processes of death and, and all these things. And so you, you do what works for you. We had these discussions, and I wrote this three years ago. I was laying in the hospital, and I had had the colon surgery, and the doctors had come in, and they had told me that it had spread throughout my body, and I had stage four cancer. And I was just, I wasn't worried about dying, but I was just bewildered. <laughs> I thought, wow, this has really happened fast. Mm -hmm. And I remember I didn't sleep much, but it was, it was somewhere around 5 a.m. My angel came in the room after all this had, been, had happened. And he stood with me in the hospital room about 5 a.m. And he encouraged me to continue moving forward in our evolution and frequency and he said you have been the pacemaker that's that's fine you have been the flagship that's the one that everybody looks and says you know we're going in the right direction and you have been the emblem that's a flag or or whatever you want to be your emblem of this Aquarius and the unveiling of man opening the wholeness of man's strengths and his weaknesses bringing in the light and the darkness unveiling the understanding of mankind you have unveiled your sign in the earth and that's that's what i i wanted to talk about just a second you every one of you you're not trying to unveil what don parnell believes that's not what it's about you are a person who now that you are awake okay Many people flooded through that door when I opened it. What happened to you on the other side of that door was a resurrection and a body change and a rapture and, 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 and took on all kinds of food and began to eat it and moved into all the judgment and you began to throw out all your judgment and you stepped into a millennium. You stepped into a white throne. You came out clean and white. And that all happened to you personally. And now you should be and I believe you are you should be opening up your sign into the earth whatever it is our sign for this day is love divine it is it's it's new day it's beyond the church ages it's the opening of oneness of the spirit it's it's a, 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 a world with no sin it's it's so many things that's our sign and you should be 
opening that sign up in your area, wherever you're at. And people looking at it and saying, oh my, this is real. And, and you flood them through that same door. Brother Branham said, you know, I've seen a, a, elder, I seen a, a, a gentleman in a brown suit. And he said, that's the color of humanity. And he said, he was standing outside that little room in the tent where the angel was at. And he said that gentleman was a very nice gentleman and said he was leading them into that little room. So I said, oh, that's, that's you, Brother Parnell. Oh, that's, uh, that's so-and-so. He's done. It's you. You're the gentleman in the brown suit. You're the gentleman in the human skin. You're the one who's leading people into that little room. You can't go in there and change them yourself, but you can show them the way in. You can open the door. You can do all those things and let them begin to reveal their sign or their day and their message mm -hmm. into the earth. Many have passed through the veils of man by your enlightenment and now understand the mystery of man. Man is humanity. You did not enter here to open the mystery of a priesthood, start up another big priesthood, another big testament, another big this or that. You didn't enter here to open a mystery of a priesthood or the glories of the earth and the universe. Your lot is to open the mystery of man, humanity. You have unveiled the man Christ, man being Christ. You have unveiled that. You have opened the door of man's mind for each to understand themselves. That's what this is about. Thick veils you have broken. Now we have the help of many and you are not alone. Here we are three and a half years later. Many brethren, many sisters, many men, many women, many females out here opening up their sign, your sign, into the earth. Relish in this moment. This is what he said. That there are many who have entered the open door. And that your work is not finished. I didn't care what they told me when I heard that. I wasn't worried about no stage four cancer. I wasn't worried about anything. He said, your work is not finished. Be sustained. Be encouraged in them. The ones who are opening themselves into theirs. The ones who are recognizing who they are. The ones who are pouring in and flooding into them. Be encouraged in them. Be sustained and encouraged in them and continue on. Your strength is in their love. Feel the people now. And that's what I've done through these last couple of months I have just sat in quietness I have I brought my mind to nothingness and I just sit and feel the people I see the beautiful things that are coming out from so so many now brother Alan Copeland and I were talking about it and he said brother Parnell he said you really don't have to say anything else just look at how it's flooding out of the people across the internet across the broadcast so many of them now on Saturday nights you know I go I take a few minutes and they're coming on everywhere live broadcast because you're it's Sunday morning for you over on the other side of the world and you're coming on left and right and you're saying beautiful things and great things and I just, I just love it mm -hmm. and brother Allen said the Lord the spirit, the people definitely have something else for you to do or you have had every chance to move on. <laughs> and that's true, I have. So, understand what's going on. The people are now touching the earth and we, we have miles to go before we sleep or before we move into the next realm. Situations arise 
friction arises. People take a different path. Mm -hmm. It happens. Mm -hmm. I don't feel bad about those people. I don't curse those people. I wish when they do that, just if my wish were anything, it is that they would just move on. Mm -hmm. If they found something that means more to them than where we are at, go with it. And, and don't fight and argue and fuss and spew. Believe with all your heart that every single one of us are going to come through that process with you. And it might be a year, two, ten, twelve, a whole generation, whatever. It might be a thousand years. But if it's something from the Spirit and it opened up your soul and it changed you and moved you on, be happy with it and move on. And if you feel confused in it, back off. Do what works for you. Situations of frictions in your life try to linger. What you need to do, every one of us, what we need to do, and I've done it in my heart. This is why I'm talking about it. I'm talking to you from the heart. Situations come up and they linger. They linger on. Whether it's something to do with your body, something to do with your spirit, something to do with somebody else out here, uh, whatever it might be, situations come up, friction arises, and it lingers. If you let them, they will stick to you like Velcro. Whatever that situation is. If you let it, it's going to be like somebody you know, throwing mud against the wall. They're hoping it sticks somewhere. It will stick like Velcro and drag you into issues and problems and more problems and more problems and out of this comes this and out of this comes that because it's, it's a process of friction. It's a cycle that you get into. Tell those things and those feelings, physical issues in your heart, in your mind, in your healing process. Tell them that it's time to go. Just move it out. Just say it's time to go. Tell them that you are not going to give them a home here to live. Not in this mind. You know, on March 9, I said, this is my last operation. I'm not going to have another operation. I'm not going to do this and that. I'm moving now. I'm on my way. I'm healed. My body's feeling better. And then bang, that happened. I didn't fall apart. I didn't say... Oh my God, I told all these people I was never going to have nothing else happen to me. Now they're never going to believe in me. I don't know what to do. I lied to the people. I did it. I could, have, I could have fell into all sorts of things. But that friction, I said, okay, it's just a moment longer. And now I'm going to sit here and I'm going to say, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. I'm healed. I didn't have any more problems. And I believe it's over and I don't believe I'm going to have another problem I don't think I will have another problem for decades to come I believe I'm through it with all my heart so you say that and you tell it that and you don't mind it you don't dwell on it you don't worry about it view these things these times of friction is things that come and go. Don't let them stick or drag you into issues and problems. Tell these things, your feelings, your physical issues, it's time to go. Tell them that you're not going to give them a home. There isn't enough room for all of this goodness and you to dwell together. So you got to leave. I have too much in, to enjoy for you to stick around. Then push it out of your life. Through the strengths that you have built, through your spirituality, through its oneness and eternal life, and through the love of others that are praying and trusting you're going to be well. Just push it out of your life. That's what female does. 
And we had the conversation I was saying, Brother Gary Williams said, we should just put an H in there. And I thought, wow, that, that's great. That's exactly what the Spirit did to tell the difference between Abram and Abraham, mm -hmm. Sarah and Sarah. Put an H in. So I wrote this, Female, F-E-H-M-A-L-A, M-A-L-E. A nature, a soul in a person that has transcended separation of the male and female. No matter the gender, I don't care if you're a male or a female, you can come beyond the whole male and female mechanism. All these belief systems that we have out here, mm -hmm. it's male and female mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. You can transcend beyond all of that and you can move into a female. One who is a he and a she combined. One who is a his and a her combined. Completely oneness we've come to a condition that we gravitate and we move toward what works for us when you come into female you're always looking and watching as an observer you're always looking and watching what works for you yeah. and if something works for you 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 make it a part of your life. Mm -hmm. you you bring the seed in you open the soul you birth it from the womb and you make it a part of your life mm -hmm. if it's working for you we are doers because we do what works read the book of james now with this thinking in your mind be doers and not just hearers you know you can hear and you don't gravitate, you don't bring the seed in, and you don't let it change your soul, and you don't open up into a physical resurrection and begin to walk differently and think differently about it, then you're just a hearer. But be a doer of the word that come forth out of the mouth. Be a doer. We've come to a condition, we are doers because we do what works our works are not dead our works do not fall to the ground we abandon what doesn't work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when dead works arise in us and they do just like any tree or anything you got to prune off dead limbs and this and that and the other when dead works arise we abandon them right. we don't put any life into it we clip it off and we keep moving and we don't worry those dead works were not us we're doers of the real work Jesus said the works that I do shall you do also what work did he do he kept moving forward in the revelation until he completely manifested his purpose in life and you do the same work We've come to enjoy our works because it comes from our spirit of creation. Spiritual selection becomes physical selection. It's not two going on. It's one and the body and the spirit move together. The body without the spirit is dead. We come to enjoy our works because it comes from our spirit of creation, our connection, our intercourse mm -hmm. produces, and we stay with it because it does. It produces. We see great things, and we stay with it. It works, and it brings life. It brings life in other people. It brings satisfaction in us, and it brings life and satisfaction and comfort in us. It brings rest. We can't be talked away from this enlightenment because we found it works. It's great. It's what we understand. 
It's not even what we believe, it's what we know. It works and brings life. We can't be talked away from this enlightenment. People have tried to do it. Many have tried their best to talk you away from exactly what we're talking about this morning. They can't do it. Because for you, it opened up a person inside you. It opened up you yourself. You're experiencing it. You're feeling it. Who can talk you out of that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No one can. Our works live. They produce, replenish, and regenerate in every realm. It's like the, the ocean that Ezekiel saw. The rivers were flowing into the ocean. And he said the ocean become deep and it was up to the knee and then up to the uh, waist and then up and, and, and finally it became a great vast ocean that you could swim in. And he said everywhere that it went, everywhere it went, everything that it touched, it brought forth life. Mm -hmm. That's you. That's your works. That's what you're doing. Our works live, produce, replenish, and regenerate in every realm. In everything, that is why we don't walk away. What do you mean walk away? Someone said, oh, Brother Parnell, you need to walk away from this thing. You need to wake up. You need to, you need to realize you've done the people wrong. You need to repent to the people. Walk away. Repent. Repent over what's brought life to hundreds and thousands and millions of people. A life that they can live on their own, like that little bird out here that I put my hand on and it jerked and it raised up. It was laying there lifeless and dead. Laid my hand on her and said, have life. And bang, it raised up and away it went. It was gone. Now that little bird ain't flying around saying, Don Parnell raised me from the dead. Don Parnell gave me a resurrection. It's enjoying life. Enjoying life it's, it's its own life. And I see it come back. I know the beak. It was a different colored beak and it's a little red cardinal. And I see it come back and it's eating and it's enjoying itself. It's its own life. Mm -hmm. That's what, how in the world can somebody talk you into walking away from that? Replenish, regenerate, never realm. In everything, that is why we don't walk away. That is why we move with the Spirit. It gives us the works to grow and enjoy life and help others do the same. There's no encouragement within to leave this vast ocean of understanding because we've all experienced its works. Mm -hmm. We know what it does. Let me give you an example, and I wrote this on Facebook, but I, I, I'll hurry here. Abraham, we do what works for us. We are children of Abraham. Let me give you a biblical example. Abraham was told that he would be a father of many nations, and he was told the first step in his walk, what to do to start out. And he was told that he would be a father of many nations and he was told the first step to reach that promise in his personal life. So Abraham took the first step. He left the land of Syria, crossed the Jordan, and sojourned in a strange land. Now you know if that hadn't worked for him and things weren't going well, you know what Abraham would have done? He'd have ran back to Mesopotamia. He'd have ran back to Syria. But it worked for him and he said I know this is the spirit speaking to me because this is working this is nice it worked for him he he walked into land he prospered he lost his father which he was told not to take to begin with he had to send his nephew away Lot because of strife but it wasn't strife over a, a terrible problem. It was strife over success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were both having so much success that their success was, quote, running into one another. Mm -hmm. So Abraham said, go your way. Look and choose. And go your way. Have your own path. We've come into a new land. We've come into a new day. 
You don't have to stick with me. Go your way. And he walked into a land where Lot didn't choose. He took another path. There's some lots. Don't worry. We're in a new land. We're all successful. We've all come here. Don't worry. Let them go their way. Let them have their path. And Abraham chose to go where Lot didn't go and continued to sojourn again. And it worked for him more. It continued working for him. Abraham built altars, was blessed of the Spirit, was given the sign of circumcision. The Spirit was dealing with him, showing him how that this thing that was going on in the spiritual mind mm -hmm. was manifesting itself mm -hmm. in the flesh. Mm -hmm. A spiritual resurrection is a fleshly, a physical resurrection too. It was manifesting in the physical and the Spirit gave Abraham, or Abram, and Sarah a new name. Abraham and Sarah. He was blessed greatly. What he was doing was working for him. Don't walk away from those things. So he didn't abandon it. Famine struck the land. Abraham tried to do something. He moved out of the promised land, sojourned into Egypt, gave up his wife Sarah, gave her away, lied to a king, Abimelech, and the Spirit brought confrontation in his life, brought troubles in his life that he hadn't had to face in a long time. With the king, he abandoned his idea of moving into Egypt. He realized that he tried to do some dead works. And the dead works weren't going weren't to work for him. What he did didn't work for him. It proved to be dead works. And he moved out. And he headed back where things worked for him. That will happen to you occasionally. Clip off the dead limb and move on. Mm -hmm. Just say, okay, yeah, that, that's, that's a part of the past, but that, that, was, that was dead works. You say... Well, Brother Parnell, Jesus didn't have that. I beg your pardon. Jesus got to thinking about Moses. And Jesus, you know, Moses, he had such a vast ministry, he couldn't, he couldn't do it all. So Moses said, I'm going to set up 70 elders. And these 70 elders are going to be judges and they're going to work throughout Israel to help me do the work of moving us into the promised land. Worked great for Moses. Mm -hmm. So Jesus comes along, he gets into his ministry, he says, man, this is a vast ministry. I'm going to do what Moses did. He gets 70 elders, he sets them all up, and it ain't long till they reject him. Turned against him. They turned against him. <laughs> they walked away, they said, we can't eat your flesh and your blood, we can't do these yeah. things, we're leaving you. It didn't work for Jesus. So those dead works that Jesus had, he just cut them off and moved on. Looked at the 12 and said, will you go also? I, I'm not sticking with these dead works. Yeah. I'm moving on. Just do that. Just move on when you run into a few dead works. Don't worry about it. When our works are dead, abandon them. Stay with what works in your life. Spiritual selection into the, the, the mind, the male, pushes the seed out into the soul, and you make a selection whether it becomes a part of your life and moves into a physical resurrection or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. You make mm -hmm. that selection. Spiritual moves into physical selection. When our works are dead, abandon them. Stay with the works in your life. Trust in your purpose. Promise for the present moment. As Abraham and Sarah went through their life, they continued in that understanding and it led them to the, the purpose that they moved out for. They moved out for the purpose of bringing forth a father of many nations. You can get this piece apart here. Can you pull that apart? They moved out to a father of many nations and moved into a land, a promised land, and an understanding mm -hmm. of who they are. Mm -hmm. And they continued with what worked. 
And you can look back and you say, well, Abraham struggled through this and he struggled through that, Brother Parnell, and he had a tough time. Abraham had a tough time. Well, let's look and see what the Spirit said about it. When Paul's writing, and he said, look back there at Abraham, he said, he staggered not at the promise of God and counted those things which were not as though they were. And he became the father of of many nations and he became our spiritual father and he became the very his bosom was a very type and symbol of the Holy Spirit what a man what a man what didn't work he cut it off and what did work he moved on with it he became a father of many nations he continued to walk from what didn't work in his life and cling to what worked for him this set the pattern for Abraham to be her spiritual father and, and, and his bosom was a symbol of the Holy Spirit to be a doer and not a hearer only. That's you. That's what you're doing right now. You are a doer by bringing these things. Your, your mind produces a seed germ, drops it into the very soul, the woman and character of who you are, and brings on a physical resurrection and produces and regenerates a man child it's what's going on in our lives you know your life you know what these truths are you know what these moves of the spirit have been I don't have to go back through them we've been through them you know what they've done for you you know what these promises have done for you in your present moment you know the work within you, the feeling of comfort, relaxation, and rest. Mm -hmm. You know the feeling and need to abandon what doesn't work at times. You say, I, I don't know if I've done that. Yes, you have done it. <laughs> you abandoned being the elite. We used to think we was the smartest. We was the elite. We was the spiritual. We was the message. We abandoned that dead work. Because that's what it is. It's a dead work thinking that you're elite and above and superior to someone else mm -hmm. and they are inferior to you. We abandon fear. We have no fear now. Nothing puts me in an afraid mode. I, I just, nothing does. We abandoned our judgment. Dead works. We abandon separation. Dead works. Mm -hmm. We abandon hell. Dead works. We abandoned all those things and just said that's not a part of us. We're separating from them. We are abandoning these dead works and we clipped off all these dead works and we're moving on. We know what works for us and you know personally what works for you and abandon what doesn't. Stay in this understanding, this beautiful understanding of yourself and relish and cherish this amazing spirit of love and understanding it works for me it works for me many of you all of you I hope have stepped through that door everybody in life has received enlightenment it's not like we are enlightening somebody we're just bringing them to something that they haven't touched or felt before. And we bring them to that. But every time that you move into something new, you're being enlightened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From the very first breath to the very last breath. Mm -hmm. You're being enlightened. We're here to help enlighten people and ourselves to the purpose of what we are and who we are and why we're here. Mm -hmm. Do what works for you. I didn't think I would go near this long, but I did. <laughs> um, I feel good. I love you. Is there anything either one of you want to say before we... You talked about a likeness. I want to just bring a distinction here. Our job is not to enlighten people. I agree with them 100%. The enlightenment's already there. What we are bringing is an awareness 
of that enlightenment already being there and an awareness of processes how to move into those enlightenments that are laying there dormant their experiences we're moving into and as we move into it we bring it that seed we bring it to fruition and we gain understanding from that that's right that's our that's our enlightenment it's already there it's like running down a train track and every joint that you cross you're still on the same track you're yes. just progressing forward that's right. our awareness what we're doing is simply letting people know everything you need all the enlightenment and understanding you need is already in your experiences you need to learn how to choose your experiences to get the enlightenment that you need personally that's it that's it amen spiritual and natural selection yep what do you choose to produce? Do you choose to stay barren to the things out here that are dead works? Do you choose to walk in life? Yeah. That's what it's about. What are your choices? Your life is like a tree. Do you want to shape it to where you're spending all your time pruning off what you don't need? Or do you want to do things in a way where it's putting out the fruit that you need, the purpose for having it? That's it. Yes. We've been pruning mm -hmm. for a long time. Now the fruit. Now it's time for the fruit. It's getting ripe. Yep. It's getting, it's getting beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than ever. Mm -hmm. It's more tastier than ever. Mm -hmm. We've been through the bruising. Mm -hmm. We've been through the pruning. And now the sunlight is bringing out the beauty of who we are. Catch on to it with healing. Heal yourself in one another. In Christ, heal yourself. Yes. Financial walks, spiritual walks, career walks, everything. Heal yourself in Christ and in the energy of who we are. Love bless. Good.